Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare I am William Shakespeare. I was born in 1564 in Stratford-upon-Ever in England. My father was a glove maker. I studied Greek, Latin and history, but I left school when I was 14 or 15. Three years later, I married an Atway. We had a daughter and twins. Then I left the Stratford and I went to London where I worked as an actor and started writing plays and poetry. I wrote more than 38 plays, tragedies, comedies and historical plays. I loved the language and invented the new words and expressions that you style use today. I became rich and famous. People all over the world still love my plays because I wrote wonderful stories about very interesting people. William Shakespeare was born in 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon in England. His father was a glove maker. He studied Greek, Latin and history, but he left school when he was 14 or 15. Three years later, he married Anne Hathaway. They had a daughter and twins. Then he left Stratford and went to London, where he worked as an actor and started writing plays and poetry. He wrote more than 38 plays, tragedies, comedies and historical plays. Shakespeare loved language and invented new words and expressions that you still use today. He became rich and famous. People all over the world still love his plays because he wrote wonderful stories about very interesting people. In the ancient Italian city of Verona, Lord Capulet was planning a party. He was sure no members of the Montague family would turn up, as the Capulets and Montagues had been feuding for years. The quarrel ran so deep that even their servants fought, but Lord Capulet was wrong. Romeo, Lord Montague's son, and Mercutio, his friend, did come in disguise. He was infatuated with Lord Capulet's niece, Rosaline. Romeo, however, instantly forgot Rosaline when he saw Lord Capulet's sweet young daughter, Juliet. Her beauty stole his heart. Unfortunately, Romeo was recognized by Lord Capulet's fiery nephew, Tybalt. But Lord Capulet forbade fighting at his ball and made Romeo welcome. So Romeo wooed Juliet and soon their love was mutual despite the feud. As the party ended, Juliet ran to her balcony to declare her love for Romeo to the stars. Romeo risked death by climbing the Capulet's orchard wall to see Juliet. That night, the loving pair agreed to wed in secret, lest the feuding families part them. As dawn broke and Juliet's nurse finally got her to bed, Romeo raced to Friar Lawrence. The friar agreed to marry the sweethearts, hoping this would unite the families. Later that morning, Juliet joined Romeo at the chapel, and the happy pair were wed. Then, Romeo and Juliet parted, as they knew they must, until Freya and Lawrence had broken the news to their families. On the way home, Romeo met his good friends Benvolio and Mercutio, being harangued by Tibble for consorting with the Montague. Romeo, now related to Tibble by his marriage, tried to prevent a fight, but failed. 
Tybalt and Mercutio's swords clashed, and Mercutio fell dead. Provoked by his friend's death, Romeo struck Tybalt a fatal blow. The Prince of Verona was tired of the feuding families disturbing the peace, so, when he heard of the deaths, he banished Romeo. Unhappy Juliet, her cousin killed by Romeo and Romeo exiled, what could Romeo do but go and beg her forgiveness and say farewell? Not until morning did the lovers part, hoping that soon Friar Lawrence could secure a pardon for Romeo and pacify their families. But Lord Capulet, thinking to comfort Juliet after Tibalt's death, told their faithful suitor, Paris, that they could marry on Thursday. Horrified, Julia rejected the plan, but dared not to reveal her marriage to Romeo. Juliet ran to Friar Lawrence for help, and in desperation they agreed a devious plot. Accordingly, Juliet went home, and to her father's joy, agreed to marry Paris. Before the wedding, Juliet took a drug so as to appear dead for 42 hours. When Juliet's nurse tried to wake her, she seemed quite lifeless. So, amid the morning, the wedding party became a funeral procession. Juliet was carried to the family burial vault, from where, according to the friar's plan, Romeo would rescue her. But the friar's letter, telling Romeo of the scheme, went astray. A messenger told Romeo the false news of Juliet's sudden death. Romeo bought poison and went to the tomb. There he found Paris, who, in his misery, attacked Romeo, who slew him in defense. Then Romeo gave Juliet a kiss and drank the poison, just to lay the Friar Lawrence a right, now aware that his letter had not reached Romeo. As the friar cried out in horror, Juliet awoke to see Romeo lifeless beside her. Hearing voices approach, the friar fled, but Juliet, unable to imagine life without Romeo, took up his dagger and, stabbing herself, fell dead upon her husband's body. When the families of the Montagues and Capulets arrived upon this tragic scene, they were grief-stricken at the consequences of their vendetta. Lord Capulet and Lord Montague would to raise a golden statue to each other's child. Thus, they buried the feud along with the precious children, Romeo and his sweet Juliet.